Hello again, everyone. Hello again, everyone. Hello again, everyone. Hello again, everyone. Is there an echo in here? Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, I'm going to show you the basics of the echo command, which is very useful in showing text on the terminal and also showing the contents of variables. So let's go ahead and dive in and get started. The basic usage of the echo command is very simple. For example, we could type echo and then hello world, and it's going to, well, echo hello world just like that. Another very popular use case for echo is to print the contents of a variable. For example, if I created a variable named message abbreviated, and I set that equal to hello world, then I could simply type echo and then dollar sign and the name of the variable, and it's going to echo out whatever that particular variable contains. And speaking of variables, we have quite a few variables in our session that are created for us, as you can see here, so what I'm going to do is just echo the home variable, which is in all caps, and that prints the location of the home directory for my user, as you can see right here. So as you can see, the echo command is very simple, but there's some other cool things that you could do with echo as well. So I'm going to give you guys some additional examples. And one of those examples is that you can actually sound an audible alert. And the way you do that is you type echo and then dash E, and the dash E option allows you to change the format of the text that shows up when you echo something with the echo command. And for an audible alert, we can use backslash and then a lowercase a, followed by the message. And let's see what happens. Now in my case, I'm not actually going to hear any audio when I run this because I've disabled audio output on my laptop. This is a recording studio. And also, if you are running Linux on your local laptop or workstation, then go ahead and run this command on your local machine as well as your Linode instance. And that way you can see if the output is any different or if you hear audio on one and not the other, and that'll help you learn. Another example is that you can use the backspace character in Echo as well. So I'll give you an example of that. So again, we'll use dash E. We want to customize the output. And then I'll type, this is a Linux server. But what I'm going to do that's going to be a bit different here is I'm going to type backslash B right here instead of a space, and let's see what happens. Now, as you'll notice, I typed lowercase a right here, and then I followed it up with slash B, as you can see, and it actually backspaced the A character. It didn't print right here, so you can actually implement backspace in the output. So what I'm going to do now is give you guys yet another example. We'll use dash E again, and I'll use the same sentence. And what I'll do is type backslash C right here. And what that's going to do is truncate anything that comes after the slash C. So this word right here shouldn't print. And let's see it in action. Now, as you can see, it not only abandoned everything after the slash C, it also abandoned a new line character that would have been here as well. So my bash prompt is actually right next to the output. And speaking of new line, what I'll do is type slash n, which will do exactly that. It's going to create a new line. And it says, this is a Linux, and then server is on the next line. And of all the examples that we've gone over so far, this might be the most useful. Maybe you want to have a particular sentence or word on a different line. And of course, you could use multiple echo statements to achieve that. However, with backslash n, then you can have a new line anytime you want it. So for example, Now I have three lines. And not only that, I'll change these to T's. Let's see what happens. And what backslash T will do is add a tab character to the output. And as you can see, we have tabs right here in the output. Now let's see an example of using echo to echo to a text file or redirect output to a text file. So what we could do is type echo, and then I'll type log file, started, then within that, We'll type date, and then plus, and then I'll type percent %t, and I'll close the quotes. And what I want to do is redirect that to a file, and the file name that I'll redirect it to is log.txt. Let's see what happens. 
So if I list the storage, we do indeed have a log file right here. And let's check out the contents. As you can see right here, it says log file started, and then it has a formatted date, which is what I put right here. And in case you're curious, you can also just simply run this right here on the command line if you're curious what it does before you run it. So there I have the date command. I'll just press enter. And as you can see, it outputs the date and the time in the format that we've requested. And using echo, we were able to include the date inside a log file. So if we were writing an application, for example, and we wanted that application to log some information, a statement like this might actually be a very useful thing to add to a log file because, well, you'll know exactly when the log file started. So there you go. I hope this video was helpful in teaching you all about the basics of bash history, which again is very useful. So definitely practice everything that I've taught you in this video. And let me know in the comments what you thought about this video or what you'd like me to cover next. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.